Hi guys, I'm Leah and I'm your plant expert here at Jacobs Trading. If you haven't heard of Jacobs Trading, check the description below. We have some information about our online store and our website. Go check it out, it's pretty cool. Today we're going to be talking about the plant aloe and how to take care of it. Aloe vera's are super easy succulents that make amazing houseplants. They are also super easy to find because they are available in a lot of different stores, even some local grocery stores could have them as well. And another really great thing is that they have a medicinal use as well. Um, the juice that's actually in the leaves here can be used to help rapidly heal scrapes or cuts, making them super great to have around the house. In order to thrive, aloe vera require bright indirect light, so a southern or western facing window is ideal. You're going to want to make sure you keep an eye on your plant though, because if it is getting too direct light, the leaves can burn, so they'll start turning more uh, red in color, so you want to watch that. Uh, a lot of people do say that they can survive in lower light conditions or even artificial light, but you want to make sure that you keep an eye on it. If they start getting too spindly or too like stretched out, you're going to want to put it into a more brighter light. When it comes to soil, your aloe vera is a succulent, so it's going to require a lot higher drainage. So you're going to want to use a cactus soil or a succulent soil specifically. Uh, this includes something that's going to have a lot of potting soil as well as a lot of sand and perlite just to add that extra drainage. Uh, when it comes to picking a pot for your aloe vera, you're going to want to pick a pot that is as wide as it is deep just so you don't have that extra water in the bottom. And you're also going to make sure that you pick something with drainage holes as they can't handle standing water. The great thing about aloe veras is that they don't need to be potted very often. And you can check this by just lifting up your aloe vera just slightly. If there is more roots than soil, you're going to want to increase the pot size. But if it's the other way around, then you can just leave it for a little while longer. When it comes to water, you want to make sure you water your plants deeply but infrequently meaning that you want to give it a good amount of water when you first water it, but you're going to want to then let it completely dry out before you water it again. If you let them sit in too much water, it's going to cause root rot, which will then kill your plant. To prevent this, you're going to want to stick your finger all the way down into that soil and make sure the top third of that soil is completely dry before watering. Depending on your environment, your watering schedule may vary. So typically, personally, I water mine about every two weeks, but this may not be the same for you. A good sign that you're overwatering your aloe vera is that the leaves are starting to get really soggy and squishy. So at this point, you're going to make sure that you stop watering your aloe very frequently. But if your leaves are starting to look really dry and really crisp, you're going to want to make sure you increase your watering schedule. Once your aloe vera is mature, it can start producing little pups, which are perfect if you want to start making new plants. All you're going to do is just find where that pup attaches to the base of the mother plant, take some sterilized scissors, cut it off at that point leave it out to callus over for a few days, and then you're gonna just put it into some new cactus soil and let it sit, and you'll have a new plant. To utilize your aloe vera and to use that gel that it produces, all you're gonna to wanna to do is remove a mature leaf. You can either do this by just cutting part of the leaf or just taking the whole leaf completely off. Uh, once you make that cut, all you're gonna do is just take that part of the leaf and just squeeze out a little bit of that gel onto your cut or scrape, and it will help heal your, your wound. One thing you want to just make sure is that make sure that you or none of your pets ingest either the leaf or the juice as it can cause nausea or other unpleasant symptoms. So that's it for me guys. I hope you learned a little something about how to take care of the plant aloe vera today. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments and I'll get to them. If you haven't already, make sure you like and subscribe to us. We're putting out new videos every week. Stay in bloom. Don't kill your aloe.